How in the world do we prepare for something like this? Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. So ladies and gentlemen, how do we prepare for this? In 10 years, you will own nothing and be happy. Whatever you want though, you can rent and it'll be delivered to you by drone. The US will not be a superpower. However, a handful of countries will dominate. But good news, you won't have to wait for an organ transplant because one can be printed for you. And meat, like I've been saying, will be a thing of the past. Only something that you will be able to have as an occasional treat. A billion or more people will be displaced. And refugees will have to be integrated. And guess what? Anyone that emits CO2 will be taxed. But ask yourselves, what comes out of your mouth when you exhale? We may be able to go to Mars, and it will be made healthy for us out in space. This is in 10 years. However, Western values may be tested to the breaking point, but checks and balances that underpin our democracy must not be forgotten. Now this is a video of eight predictions for the world in 2030 that was introduced by the World Economic Forum. Everything in this video sounds great, but what do we have to give up in order to attain those goals that the World Economic Forum has stated that we will be living in in the next 10 years? This article right here was written by Martin Armstrong. And before I proceed with reading some excerpts of this article, I want to explain to you who Martin Armstrong is. Martin Armstrong is a self-taught economist who spent, I think, more than a decade in jail. The thing about his jail time is that most of that time was for contempt of court. The reason he went to jail is not why I'm introducing you to Martin Armstrong. It's what he has that I believe governments want. Martin Armstrong developed a computer system which very accurately has predicted a lot of things that have come and passed. I'm going to go ahead and read this really quick for you before we go back to our original article. 27 February 2007 is not a date that stands out. It is not indelibly imprinted on the minds of millions. It does not carry the pain of notoriety. It has not been nicknamed, nor like 31 August 1997, the day Diana died, did it send a nation into mourning. Yet, the repercussions of this day are quite simply enormous they may be felt for decades and possibly mark the beginning of the next Great Depression. For this was the day the greatest credit bubble in history peaked and popped. And one man predicted this turn as far back as the 1970s. He is Martin Armstrong. What's more, another one of his turn dates is coming this weekend. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, this article was written in 2009. Martin Armstrong's story reads like a thriller. He was a globe-trotting and extremely constrained investment manager who in the late 1990s was accused of misappropriating Japanese investors of some $700 million in some kind of Ponzi scheme. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, the word they're using is accused. The money was lost on bad bets in the currency markets and losses were being concealed. Though Armstrong said he did not authorize the trades. Nevertheless, he was indicted in 1999 and ordered by Judge Richard Owen to turn over gold bars and antiquities which he said to have bought with his firm's money as well as computers and documents. Armstrong delivered four of five computers, sought eight of the 11 requested boxes of documents and gold coins worth $1.1 million. The receiver said assets worth about $15 million were missing. Armstrong insisted that was all he had. Judge Owen 
revisiting the order every 18 months held him in contempt of court for seven years, some kind of record for prison without trial. Nevertheless, Owen repeatedly held that Mr. Armstrong was motivated by greed and was awaiting his release from jail to retrieve the $15 million that the government said was missing. Mr. Armstrong's years in jail for civil contempt matched the sentence of six and a half to eight years that he would have received if he had been convicted of all 24 criminal counts of securities fraud, commodities fraud, and wire fraud. But in late 2006, after appeal, Judge Owen was removed from the case. In 2007, after a period in solitary, Armstrong faced trial, pleaded guilty, and is now serving a prison sentence for the first five years. So he ended up spending about 12 years in jail. He probably told himself, I either plead guilty and serve another three or four or five years, or I just keep fighting the system and stay in jail for the rest of my life. Now this is what I think is at the center of all this, Armstrong's unique economic confidence model. What makes Armstrong's story exceptional is his astonishing economic confidence model, which he developed in the 70s and the 80s. Looking back at centuries of economic data, Armstrong identified a long-term business cycle of 309.6 years, which is broken down into six 51.6 years. Armstrong's 51.6 year wave breaks down into a further six waves of 8.6 years, which breaks down into a further three individual waves of different durations. And his model has become known as the Pi Cycle because 8.6 years is 3,141 days. So Pi is 3.14. To get to the meat of it, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll put you through all of this pain right here of these charts and everything here. I'm going to go ahead and show you why I believe that he spent so much time in jail. Look at some of these turn dates and see what happened. 2007 equates to 27 February 2007. The chart below shows the Dow Jones U.S. Financials, an index of the major stocks relating to banking, insurance, and real estate and financial services. And as you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, this chart, he nailed the top before it started going down. So he nailed the top to the day before it started going down. Well, not him, but the computer system that he created. 1987, the next chart shows the Dow during the stock market crash of 87. You can see Armstrong again nailed the low to the day. Remember, every time they say Armstrong, it's a computer system he developed. Not precisely to the day, but within a fortnight in 1989, saw the highs in the Nikkei, which is in Japan. Japan. So you see, he nailed it within what? A fortnight is what, two weeks? He nailed the top within two weeks before Japan started going down on a multi-year bear market. In 2000, he saw the downturn of the S&P. See where I'm getting at here, ladies and gentlemen? This gentleman has a computer system which he will not give up and did not give up and he was held in contempt because this computer system that he has is extremely accurate it even predicted the downfall of the russian of the ussr back in 1987 i believe it was now listen to this he claimed to have developed a 32,000 variable supercomputer based on his economic model with perhaps the largest economic database in the world in fact, some claim that these institutions wanted this very computer model and the reason he was held in prison for so long without trial was that he refused to hand it over. Armstrong himself commented, I know too much. So the reason that I wanted to go over this quick article here showing you who Armstrong is, is so that you know that the person that wrote this article here it's not someone who doesn't know anything. Now here, we have eight predictions for the world in 2030. And this is a quote from this gentleman, Mr. Schwab, who is the leader of the World Economic Forum. And he says, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy about it. And I believe that some documents have come about from our neighbors to the north of the United States of America, uh, where they show that 
they are going to pretty much zero out everyone's debt. However, no one will own anything. I believe seeing a video on that not too long ago, I'm talking like within a week or so. And here Martin Armstrong says, I am deeply concerned that too many Americans are totally blind to the truth. This is the World Economic Forum video on eight predictions for 2030, which include the surrender of the United States to the United Nations. They just say that the U.S. will no longer be the world superpower. They will end eating meat, will make fossil fuels history, and will rejoin the United Nations. And here are the eight points that were in this video right here. It says here, you will own nothing and you will be happy about it. Ladies and gentlemen, when we work and we give our lives for something, we have some kind of gratification in knowing that when we pass on, we would be able to leave those energies that we expended of ourselves while we were alive to our children. This does not make it so. If you will own nothing, who will own it? Who will be in charge of the land that you walk on, that you paid for, that you worked for? Number two, the U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. In a way, it's kind of easy to see that happening. How powerful can a country without an economy be? A country that does not produce. It says here that you won't die waiting for an organ donor because organs will be printed for you via 3D. However, who gets to decide? If you own nothing, who gets to decide if you get a heart or a kidney or a liver? You will eat much less meat. Meat will be an occasional treat. Again, who gets to decide when you can have meat? A billion people will be displaced by the climate. Displaced where? Polluters will have to pay to emit carbon dioxide. There will be a global price on carbon. You understand that, ladies and gentlemen? It says here, there will be a global price on carbon. Now, I already know that this video is probably going to get a million dislikes, but that's okay. Because the reason I'm making this video is to get you to think. Get you to think about what's going on. Why is it happening? And what will be the consequences of us foregoing our liberties for some security? Number seven, the one that says you will be preparing to go to Mars or you could be preparing to go to Mars. I don't really have any comments on that. I mean, if we can go to Mars, that's great. Uh, I don't know what we are going to benefit by going to Mars, but I guess we won't know until we're there. So well, that's fine. Number eight, Western values will have been tested to the breaking point. I believe they're, they're being tested right now but I believe also that it's going to get worse. And Martin Armstrong continues, this is the agenda that has been set in motion by these people and the lockdowns were intended to crush the economy, set in the direction of nationalizing all industry and wipe out small businesses. The elimination of the middle class. They are developing a passport that will require the miracle shot in order to travel. They are deliberately trying to reduce international travel, to reduce pollution and to prevent mass uprisings against their new agenda. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I found this to be a very interesting article. Let me go ahead and finish it up with this. This is the real danger we face. World Economic Forum and its vision for a new green world order. The press will not do their job, for if they did, they would expose the fact that the World Economic Forum sold all of its investments just before the crash. 
This is the greatest organized conspiracy in human history, and the press is welcoming it with open arms. You will own nothing in 10 years, but you will also have no rights. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the main point. Everyone wants this great reset. Everyone wants to have their debt cleared out. They want the easy way out. I believe that we do require a reset, but a reset <laughs> that is nothing like this. Usually, whenever there is a reset, there is pain because what a reset is, is, is we're paying back for our mistakes that we made in the, in the past, whether intentional or not. Everyone wants to be bailed out, but with that comes a price. And as it states here, in 10 years, you will own nothing, but you will also have no rights. You will not owe to anyone. You will not own anything. You will have no rights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that a lot of you are going to have some interesting comments. Please leave it in the comments below. Keep it classy. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for a few minutes here today. I hope this wasn't too boring. I just thought that I put this out there so that you guys can do your own research and come up to your own conclusions. How in the world do we prepare for something like this? Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.